Claudia and I, uh, I'm Anglo-Argentinian, I'm based in the UK, documentary filmmaker, very concerned about my country of origin, who have been in lockdown heading to the sixth month now, very concerned as well about what's happening in the UK. I have been following your approach, and every time I have shared posts about your approach, I have been accused of being right-wing, or I have been told that it's because the Swedish have low population density. What would you say to these people? First of all, I would very much deny that there's any kind of political signal in this. I don't think I'm really concerned about if this is right-wing, left-wing, or middle path in any way. Uh, second of all, I would definitely deny that Sweden is a densely populated country. Yes, it is. Oh, less densely populated country than us. Yes, on the whole we are, of course, but if you look at the Stockholm region, the Stockholm region is very densely populated. At least as densely populated as Amsterdam, Brussels. So that's not an explanation. <laughs> With 12,000 people per square mile, Stockholm has the same population density as Manchester. According to the Imperial College of London model, the death toll in Sweden, without lockdown, would have been almost 100,000 by the end of June. And yet, their results were nowhere near these predictions. They have put a lot of responsibility on the, on the individual citizen to, to judge for themselves. And I think it's been working pretty good in Sweden. In the news, and they say, like, Sweden does it doesn't take it in um, like unvar seriously like serious i think it's kind of hysterical actually it's it's not fact i think it's just uh, easy political shots for the gov different governments all from trump saying no it's nothing to somebody's shutting down the whole society or i'm 16 years old and I went to school all last year and this year, and uh, I'm glad that it stayed open. Uh, at one time, uh, there was uh, rather many people who got sick and was uh, needed to stay at home, and there were many teachers at home. At one point, I remember. So tell place. me, when there were many teachers at home, did anybody die? Did anybody have any serious illness? Not that I know. I think he's doing the right thing by not locking down Sweden. So I think it's good. You feel safe? Yeah, I feel safe. If you want to wear a mask, then do so. And I think that all of us, like younger people, we can, we're not as, as, as affected as the older ones <coughs> and, and people who's like sick or something. So I think that we can keep our distance and so on for them. Are you able, do you have a grandmother that you cannot visit? Or? Yeah, I, I do, but uh, I'm going to actually visit her tomorrow, but it, outside. So we're going to have dinner outside and she has a house. So, in Stockholm streets, I did meet plenty of people who had had coronavirus or knew someone who had had it, in its mild form. However, I was struggling to find any elderly or vulnerable people on the streets. Where were they? Tegnell had given them the choice to stay at home to save their own lives. In the UK, the head of the NHS England claimed this to be age-based apartheid. In the name of my children and of all the young people, I would like to challenge this is it fair for the young and healthy to be facing unreasonable restrictions at the start of their lives to protect those who are at the end of theirs? Basically, for the first time in history, we put the healthy into lockdown under the guise of saving lives. I mean, there had been quarantines in the past, but quarantine means restricting the movement of the sick and vulnerable, which is what Tegna is doing. Restricting the movement of the healthy is something altogether different. I traveled to the southern suburbs of Stockholm, where I met Eva. I have struggled to find older people in the streets. You're the first one. <laughs> so what do you say to 
shielding the vulnerable and letting the rest of the society cracking on. I think it's been rather successful and I'm, I'm rather pleased that he has uh, done it his way. I mean, we have closed up ourselves. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, yeah. have you been in touch with your grandchildren? How has that worked? Uh, by telephone and outside. The, she's grown up, so but she's very, very uh, afraid to, to, uh, that we should be uh, contaminated. It's not, a, it's not the word. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So she keeps really a distance, and but uh, we, have, they have, they have come and visit. We eat together outside with the distance, but you have to think about it all the time, and that's, it eats your brain. <laughs> Do you feel well, that Techno took care of the vulnerable with his approach? Yes, I think so. I, I, yes, I feel so. I think that it's time to get some kind of structure for, for us, the vulnerables, in uh, the metro, for example, that uh, the first wagon should be just for people who, who are vulnerable and, and that all the shops and the pharmacies and everything should be there should be one hour when it's not permitted for the other ones to, to come. It's a fantastic idea. Um, has it been proposed? No, 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 but I'm going to do it. What do you think about the approach in the UK where they lock down the whole society, the schools, uh, everything to protect the vulnerable? What do you think of uh, that? I think it's kind of uh, torture. Uh, I don't know how, how, how people... Uh, what's the mental health risks? Because if we feel this... Uh, uh, yes, depression. Uh, how, how how can they feel? How can I uh, sitting in the in the in one apartment for so long time? It's not it's not human. So, is there anything else that you would like to say to the people who are wanting the whole society to be in lockdown to protect the vulnerable? What would you say to them? But there are many there are many ways to protect vulnerables. There isn't only one way. That's what I want to say. So they were in it all together. But using their common sense, as Eva said, there's different ways to support the vulnerable. In Sweden, they were voluntarily self-isolating so that the rest could carry on studying and working towards supporting them. She even had some ideas as to how to improve their situation and was going to propose them to her leader. In tango, when the follower feels safe and trusts her leader, she can become creative and inventive, fully participating in the dance.